I will say this about Sage. We are targeting um, probably February now for a, a DevNet launch. And what we're going to do is just roll this out, even if it's in very limited feature sets. So what we're looking at for February is probably the coordinate and movement systems, uh, but it at least gives you an opportunity to get into the game and start playing around and, and see the UI and get a sense for what you're going to be doing. And then as we do, we iterate, we update, um, and we release, and we'll keep you all notified as new features are coming online. Location, movement, and star path network, because obviously this is a big one. This is like getting around. And so it's uh, even just with the read through, it's clear that a lot of time and attention has been put into this. Um, what are some of the considerations, movement, and the mechanics of it have been put into place? Yeah, this one, surprisingly, you, ever, you would think that movement is the simplest game mechanic to figure out, right? <laughs> and it was actually one of the most challenging design aspects of Sage, because here, here, here's an example we like to always fall back on. In, in normal games, non-blockchain games, moving a ship around a map happens at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. So that means that the, the game understands the location of that ship update or refresh rate, right? So, you know, moving around, it feels pretty fluid, feels pretty seamless, and the the game server knows where you are at, you know, be, at very fast intervals. You can't do the same thing yet on blockchains because those updates of the location require an on-chain transaction, right? Or, or very fancy interpolation techniques. So, so movement went from, okay, I, I, before you could assume that I can move things around very fluidly to, okay, well, how do we know where ships are at any given time? So we actually had to simplify movement to, to be more, um, for lack of a better analogy, chess-like. So you move ships between spaces on a map. Now it won't feel like chess because we're we're allowing you to cause we're allowing you to like move your ship around in a more like fluid way within a chess like a sector or a chess square. So it'll feel immersive. But on on chain, your ship won't actually have moved. <laughs> Right, so it'll actually um, you're moving your ship around, but the, the on-chain transaction hasn't hasn't actually initiated until you tell your fleet to move to a planet or warp or to move to a, an adjacent sector. Right, so um, that's kind of like some of the background on 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 the decisions for movement. We we had to try to limit the amount of on-chain transactions associated with movement. So, but without while while still trying to create a, an interesting and immersive um, strategy game. So, so that being said, um, reiterating, there's there's three types of movement. There's actually four, but I'll, I'll talk about the main three. So warp, non-star path. That's warping to different sectors without using a star path. Um, this is subject to your fleet's max warp distance. Say I have a, an air bike and it's and it can jump and it can warp two sectors. So that air bike can can jump two sectors over. If say my my thripid though has a max warp distance of four, that thripid can jump four sectors over. Um, a, as an example, but if I use the star path, that's connected to star systems that are fifteen sectors apart, I can just use that to get directly to the, you know, to the star system that's fifteen sectors away without having to worry about my fleet's max warp distance. distance but again, remember you're paying for the convenience of do, doing that with a bit of an atlas fee. Um, so that was the second mode of travel, star path um, warping. And the third is impulse. And that's just meaning that you're, you're not warping, but impulse and using your impulse engine to move to the sector next to you or your neighboring sectors around you. Um, and so you, you can't impulse it. You can't like hop or impulse to five sectors away, um, essentially, if you tell if you tell your ship to impulse five sectors away, you'd actually be hopping across four sec all four all the four sectors in between, um, and the that would the, the on chain programs would know where you are at any given moment based on when you start. Uh, so that's the three modes of travel, um, and then the, I guess the fourth one with, that's not listed here because it's not necessarily an on-chain movement is the cosmetic movement. So imagine that 
you have your, your fleet in a sector and you're just moving it around very like cosmetically, you're, you're just flying it around for, for, for fun to just to like have a good immersive feel. It, it won't necessarily be an on-chain transaction. You, you still exist at the same location on chain. Uh, yeah, that's, that's movement. Very good. And that also of course means that uh, other people won't be able to see you do that. That's correct. We, <laughs> we, we want, players to be able to see each other's cosmetic movements, but that could be challenging. So at a minimum, we wouldn't show it, but if we can show it, we will, right? Uh, it's just there's some engineering challenges associated with showing that. Um, yeah, I get it. A quick question. If that is the case, it's not going to be on-chain. I would assume for those uh, cosmetic movements, there won't be any fuel or, or fuel uh, charges, right? That's correct. You, you would not spend any R4 to cosmetically move your fleece. Okay. Thank you. What I really like about this is uh, when you're warping between star paths, uh, this significant warp fuel reduction. So, uh, in other words, every other type of travel is just uh, very expensive. So, yeah, it really incentivizes those star path endpoints. Well, yes, and he also mentioned at one point, uh, and this was a question I had that he had already answered for me, uh, but I think this is helpful to know is that uh, with regards to using uh, the StarPath network and going from, say, a Tier 5 uh, star base to a Tier 1 is actually going to cost you less. And uh, my question was, is that wouldn't it normally be the other way around? But it's my understanding, you explained to me the, the idea is, is that at the Tier 5, uh, resources are going to probably be more abundant and therefore cheaper than they would be at a star base tier one. So the cost to go from a higher to a lower is cheaper than the other way around. That That's correct. And if you think about another, another good benefit of that is when all three factions start out at a central space station, which is tier six, their initial star path fees will be the cheapest that they can be. So it's a good onboarding means too. If it, if it was very expensive to start out, it wouldn't actually be a very seamless kind of onboarding um, area. Right. So, so yeah, I, I think it works out in many respects. Nice.